you waiting for? Coming into Channing, sir. Oh. I get off here, don't I? That's what your ticket says, sir. Carrier assumes no liability for loss of limb, life, or property, or delay due to floods, hurricanes, landslides, earthquake, riot, insurrection, war! Or detonation of nuclear devices, whether willful or accidental. Where is Jelly Decent Allen not to include massacres by hostile Indians? <laughs> Slow down now. Come on, Eric. You're just as excited as I am. Hi, Mr. Evanston. Not quite. Mr. Hello, Rena. Hello, you Joe. two. You don't suppose we should have brought flowers or something? We've come here to praise him, not to bury him. Sure, he's on this train at all. He left Michigan Polytech this morning. I got a wire. Any number of stations he could have gotten off or fallen off. You talk as though he were a mental incompetent. Well, he writes like one. Let's look in the club car. Maybe he's asleep. Well, more likely, he took one look at this reception committee and jumped out the back window. This is a mighty handsome cigarette case, sir. Oh, I assure you, I'm getting the better of the bargain. To Perry Orton. The grand young man of Irish poetry from the grateful student body and faculty, Michigan Polytech. towels out of the spare bedroom. Don't be too sure. Do you think he'll still show up? He loves a theatrical entrance. It is, Patty. Who's going to get hanged? You or us? <laughs> Lena, what happened to your friend at the station? It didn't show. Oh. 
Mr. Disappointed, huh? You're supposed to read his poetry tomorrow afternoon. That's so important that you can smile at your papa. <laughs> That's better. Never mind, I'll sew the buttons on. Condition is he in, if any? Uh huh. And that means that you'll be here how soon? Maybe half an hour. Fred Baker will be here, Joe. Also my department chairman. I hope you're going to be able to keep Reardon in line. What do you consider in line, Harold? Kovic, student member of your reception committee. <laughs> Only you didn't show up, so we didn't know if you were coming or not. Well, how'd you do? <laughs> I've been looking forward to this for a long time. Oh, no, no. It's my pleasure. <laughs> You'd better have that cleaned right away. Oh, do you really think that a spotless pair of trousers is going to turn me from a dirty old ink slinger into a respectable man of letters and envelopes? <laughs> Professor Al, you see you found Mr. Reardon. <laughs> I see you've met him. Well, oh, come on, Patty, let's go. Well, Joe, I can't go this way. Uh, oh, I can have it clean for him. All right, but uh, hurry it up, will you? And Rena, get him to the Evansons by seven. You've uh, known Professor Howe a long time. But look, my darling, this long dress. Are you going to have me cleaned and pressed, or are you not? Actually, it's College Street. I'd love to show you the campus. Maybe tomorrow oh, before your reading. Girl, I've seen hundreds of them. I am a veritable Tarzan, happy me way through the jungle of Ivy. <laughs> reading your poetry as you go. That's right, reading. But you do have a beautiful speaking voice. <laughs> what a grand epitaph for a poem. He had a beautiful speaking voice. I'm sorry, I, I didn't... Did I say something? What? Well, I certainly don't want to force myself on you. And why not? You are, after all, a normal, healthy, red-blooded American girl. Are you not? <laughs> I have a nephew who is a poet. He makes... $22,000 a year, with three children. 
Out of poetry. Mm -hmm. Oh, for heaven's sakes, Patty, he's not a poet. He writes jingles for television commercials. Well, you don't suppose he'd have any influence to get me a job like that? I could write to him and ask him. Of course, you're a beginner. They, they might start you off no higher than maybe twelve to fifteen thousand dollars. Oh, Papa, stop talking such nonsense. Well, believe me, I'd do it for half of that. You see, that's why we have unions in this country. A fireman comes along and right away he, he, he cuts wages. You have to have pride in your work. You know what I mean? Don't sell yourself too cheap. Oh, believe me, sir, I would sell myself very dearly if I could find any takers. Hi, Bert. Hi. It's going to be much longer? Why? Well, because supposedly we were going to a show tonight. Oh, I can't. Oh, I forgot it. You know that reception committee they put me on for Patty Reardon? Well, anyway, I'm stuck with delivering him to the Evansons tonight. Well, you want me to pick you up there? No, you can't. I mean, well, I don't know, but I have Aunt Shelby stuck taking care of him all evening. In other words, uh, just forget it. Well, I can't help it. Sure, he's helpless, like a baby. You wouldn't happen to have a wee drop of something to wash down this monster of a pill, would you? Nervous Tommy, me badge of civilization. Some water? Oh, well, you see, it won't go down unless I numb the faculties a bit, if you know what I mean. <laughs> A real leak, eh? It's a terrible pill. Shilovitz? Potato brandy? Well, it doesn't really matter, huh? That one there looks fine. Just a wee drop. It's really very kind of you. Your daughter's a grand wee lass. Dinner. Just another few minutes. They might have lost their way. If you ask me, he lost his way 35 years ago. Very good. Well, thank you. Joe? No, thank you. Can I get you a drink, Fred? No, thanks, Joe. I'll stick to the cell ring. This is one occasion I'd like to view in a state of perfect sobriety. Sorry, it's my fault, really. The good lady was kind enough to have me fumigate for the occasion. I'm uh, Chicky Evanston, and this is my husband, Harold. Oh, how do you do? How do you do? Thank you so much. Well, good night. Well, is she not invited? Listen, you're not going to leave me alone here, are you? With these grinning hucksters of instant culture. Oh, surely you wouldn't turn the poor child out on a night like this. Of course not. We're just glad you got here safely after all. <laughs> this is uh, Dean Baker. How, How do you, Mr. Uh, my fiancée, the Princess Natasha Lubyanka O'Hoolahan, first Duchess of Limehouse. Enchanted. Of course, we knew her highness when she was just plain Rena Kovic, but we always felt she was destined for greater things. Uh, this is, uh, Professor Whitlock. Oh, how do you do? And, uh, Dr. Rodriguez. How do you do? Mr. Reardon, what is your opinion of the Beat School of Poetry? Well, I think they've neither been schooled or beaten enough. <laughs> but then neither has anybody else I've met thus far in this splendid country of yours. With the possible exception of young Joe Howe, who ought to be hung up by his sums for wasting his best years trying to peddle the glories of an English sentence to unconcerned savages. Uh, um, 
Uh, Mr. Reardon, have you been inspired at all by your experiences in this country? I mean, to write any poetry. Was there ever a dog praised as fleas? No, what kind of a crack is that? Oh, please forgive me, but your wife's question caught me where I bleed most easily. Uh, Mr. Reardon, um, <clears throat> what is your candid opinion? Please! There are only two topics upon which my literary agents allow me to state a candid opinion. One is the death wish in the early works of P.G. Wodehouse, and the other is T.S. Eliot's favorite breakfast food. <laughs> What's the matter, Patty? Oh, it's nothing. Will you be an angel and run down to the chemist's shop for a stomach powder? And if they haven't got it, ask for some wool of bat or a high of newt. No, no, no. Oh, my dear man, if you'll just excuse me for a moment. Maybe we'd better break this up, Joe, before it gets out of hand. Mm -hmm. I think Mr. Reardon could use a good night's rest before his reading. Yeah, I'd better go see how he's feeling. Chicky, uh, do you have his bed ready? <sighs> Harold says we ought to put a padlock on his door. But you don't think that's necessary, do you? <laughs> well, I... <laughs> Patty? Patty, you all right? So, darling, don't wait up for me. Suppose we should send out a dragnet for our missing poet? It's been my experience. He usually lands on his feet. No, and someone else's. What about Rena? Shouldn't someone call her father? There doesn't seem to be any immediate cause to notify the next of kin. Better leave the front door unlocked, Harold, so we won't wake you up. Good night. Tomorrow afternoon, I'm placing an ad to rent that guest room to somebody nice and quiet, like Jack the Ripper. About uh, two months thereafter, Scotland Yard had a squad of men detailed to do nothing but keep an eye on the every move. But all because of a harmless little inquiry I'd made in a pub about the simplest way to put together a homemade bomb. And one of those Indian signals? <laughs> no, just some friends of mine who wanted to meet you. Look, dearie, I don't like being worn on anybody's sleeve. I'm sorry. Especially in this stone-cold, sober state of mine. Would you like to graduate from sodas to something a little more influential? Take better care of it. Oh, sir, it makes me eyes water. Patty, I hate it. Well, you're pulling yourself down. You're one of the few free spirits left in this age of conformity and bomb testing. What's bomb testing got to do with this city, little cow? You want to dance? Of course I do. Anything but talk. <laughs> Dancing 
place. Oh, we like it, do you? I picked it up from some New Zealand aborigine. Look, if we want lessons, we call Fred Astaire. Well, it's quite simple here. Four, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. <laughs> You're not following me, you clown. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. <laughs> Oh, buddy, you shouldn't ought to have done that. Hey, he's a friend of mine. Hey, I'm not out of my car. I said, God, I'm breaking wide open. Go on, hit him, you big gun. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Now go on, ladies and gentlemen, a terrible, terrible riot here. Hey, what's going on here? I'm going to put on the lights, and I want you to act like gentlemen. When you come to this place, they always have brawls here. No. It's all a part of the great American landscape, isn't it? Can't have light without shadow. Let's have another drink and get out of this rat hole. You got stuck with him, didn't you? What a chore. But not now. Rena, you could have got mashed up. What are you doing here anyway? Please don't make a scene. Me make a scene? What do you call his fiasco? Oh, come on, Sir Lancelot. Good belly ache and have a drink. I had a chance to spend a few hours with a great poet. Great poet? Who? This runny-nosed pub crawler? When's the last time you wrote a poem? Four years ago? Five? Please. A poet writes poetry. He doesn't ride around the world talking about it, cashing in on Stop a reputation it. made years ago. And in between, picking up empty-headed co-eds hungry for an enriching experience. Don't insult him. Him? I don't care about him. But I do care about a supposedly decent girl throwing herself away on this dribbling has-been. Like you said, baby, you got stuck with him. Sorry. I was supposed to go out with him tonight. You're always sorry. He didn't mean it. What have you got to be sorry about? Is it for him, his lousy manner? Or is it for yourself? Because you heard something you didn't want to hear. Hmm? Or is it for me? Because I was too tired to hit him. Well, don't pity us, any of us. Look to yourself. Patty, please. He didn't mean it. He didn't know what he was saying. The idiot. He meant it. He knows. What are you doing up so late? Daughter always comes home early. So I thought it was still early. You ruin your eyes that way. So? I get a tin cup. And a seeing eye dog. At least the dog comes home sometimes. I'm sorry, Pop. I guess we just lost track of time. You went out drinking with this, this advertising fellow? Poet. What kind of a poet brings home a girl after three o'clock in the morning? I have an awful headache. What time is your first class? It's all right. I'm not going to class tomorrow. Fine. Good. Only tell me, this is how people get a diploma? By sitting home with hangovers? Can we talk about it in the morning? What's to talk about? 
Your mother, she didn't have a diploma. So she worked herself to death standing in the store. If that's what you want, all right then, what do you want? I'm leaving school. Did you hear me? Something happened tonight. Look, I don't expect you to understand. But he needs help. He needs me. He needs help to go drinking. He needs help to live up the glass, maybe. He wouldn't need to drink if he had someone to look after him. He told you that. Papa, you don't understand. I love him. Huh? And he... He loves you, huh? You know what love is. You think love is... is dates. And dancing. And running around. And drinking. And kissing. And no tomorrow. You know what love is. When he leaves tomorrow, I'm going with him. If I look haggard, it's because that goon came rolling up at three last night, howling drunk, screaming at my wife as if she were a hotel clerk. Well, now, Harold, he'll be leaving right after the reading. I just hope he didn't put you out too much. Me? That's not the problem. Well, Chicky then. No, it's Rena Kovic. What about her? Nothing, except that she's leaving with him. She told you that? He did. With all the arrogance of a hunter displaying his trophies. Oh, come on now, Harold. Don't take everything Patty says at absolute face value, even when he's sober. No, oh, I'd gladly ignore him if he'd let me. Or if you would. Oh, what is that supposed to mean? Nothing except you're his bosom friend. You uh, bring him here. You let him get drunk. You deposit him on campus and then blithely walk away from it all. What should I do? Move into your house with him? Well, I just hope she realizes what it means. Two months before graduation, throw it all away. Apparently, she doesn't care. Neither does how. Frankly, I don't feel that the student body should be exposed to men of Reardon's stamp any more than they should to the bubonic plague. You don't believe in immunization? Not when the cure is worse than the disease. Harold, aren't you over-dramatizing things a little? Patty is just simply... Right. Rena's father. Dean Baker. Professor Howe, what an endorsement for COVID's campus cleaner. I've been bringing my things in here a good many years, Reno. Is your father in back? No, he just stepped out for a minute. Thanks, Professor Howe. For what? For making it possible. Reno, when Professor Howe asked Patty Reardon here, I don't think he had you in mind. But he did bring him here. That may have been a mistake. I wouldn't want you adding to it. Are you really in love with him? I'm prying. Well, of course I am. I've known your father a long time, but I'm very aware of how hard he's worked to put you through Channing. What do you call love? I feel I'm... I'm alive when I'm with him. I'm somebody. Have we failed to make you feel that way? No, but there's more to life than a degree. I suppose I sound very juvenile to you. No, you don't. I know how you feel. And I suppose it's to your credit that you want to prove things of yourself. It's just that this is one experiment I wish you'd postpone until after you've graduated. But he needs me. Rena, I'm sure you believe that. But do you know what you're giving up? I know what I want. I don't remember who it was said it, but... the tragedy of life is that we sometimes get what we want. I should 
kept Patty in a cage while he was here. Might not have been a bad idea. But I've got to get to the trustee meeting. You don't feel the same way, do you? Don't come to me for approval. You know Patty. He told me you piled around together. I know it. Well, then you must know it's right. Rena, I first met Patty in London. And there was a wealthy American girl. Well, I was invited to their wedding. I was there. She was there. 200 other people were there. For all I know, they're still waiting. Maybe she wasn't good for him. Oh, forgive me, but for Patty, she was better than you. About $18 million better. Apparently, he prefers me. He's a free spirit. I understand him. No, you don't. You imitate him. Rena, you want to be a true bohemian? A free spirit? A little frontline soldier in the dull, unjust war against society? You want to be like him? All right. But first, you go and earn that privilege, as he did, by producing works that will live long after his public behavior has been forgotten. Now listen to me. There were months in London when Patty would drink so much he could hardly remember his name. But with that, with all the singing and dancing and clowning around, he still wrote. 14 hours a day, every day. Living on less food than a slave laborer. Drawing lyric poetry out of the loneliness and self-hatred you couldn't even begin to understand. You think he lives this way because he's free? He's more of a slave to his machine than your father is to that one. I've learned more about life and literature in one day with Patty Reardon than in all my years at school. Well, maybe you have. But what are you giving him in return? Another albatross around his neck? Another victim to feel guilty about? You'll never have to feel guilty about me. Do you know how many times in the last six years he's tried to kill himself? How do you think he got those scars on his wrists? from wearing starch cuffs? Oh, the more reason he needs someone to try and help him. Do misery and poverty and sickness really attract you that much? Maybe that's all you see in him. I see a genius. And what does he see in you? Florence Nightingale? It was you who told the committee that exposure to one genuine living artist was worth more than a hundred lectures. I don't know why, but I thought at least you would understand. And you lost your voice. Butterflies in me tummy. Well, the pint of gin will slow them down. Are you sure you're going to be all right for the reading? Only time I'll be all right is when I'm under the sod. Till then, we'll just have to muddle along, won't we? Where do we go next? Uh, uh, you mean after the caboose? <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, what's the next stop in our itinerary? Oh, our itinerary. <laughs> Our itinerary. <laughs> well, let's see now. Shall it be um, the Grand Canyon or uh, Mount Rushmore? Can you see me shelf me poetry at Lincoln and Jefferson? <laughs> 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 well, I probably get more response out of them than the Stony Face College boy. <laughs> well, perhaps we'll go for a skinny dip in the Niagara Falls. You know, I don't care. You don't care what? Where we go, as long as I'm with you. Well, that's fine. 
But if you're to be a nomad, remember one thing. Be content with the desert. Don't look for the oasis. They exist for tourists only. Hey, Professor, what have you got that won't blind a man before it kills him? And fill it up for me two old friends over there. Bertrand Russell and G.B. Shaw. You make it a quick one, it's after two, and there'll be hundreds of people waiting to hear you. If I wanted to know what time it was, I'd be wearing a watch. What's the Santa Claus, anyway? Beats me. I, I think he's an actor or something. He came in here last night with the same girl. Whew, what a scene. What about a glass for Cinderella? No, thanks. Just coffee, please. The coffee's for you. I tell you, I don't want it. It colors me teeth. Maybe we ought to go, huh? What's your rush? Besides, I got a feeling somebody may have to take care of that little girl. Fine turnout. Where's the great impresario? Joe, he's looking for Reardon. Well, there are not too many bars to cover. <laughs> I didn't know we had so many students interested in modern poetry. We haven't. Oh, now, Harold, I know perfectly well nine-tenths of them are here just to gawk at the bull that keeps trying to jump over the moon, but I still... You still think it's worth it? I do. I do, because as soon as he opens his mouth, the rest of it's going to be forgotten. And when they go home tonight, every one of those kids is going to know that poetry can be a, quote, living experience. <laughs> well, maybe. If Joe finds him... <laughs> no. Daddy. <laughs> Good. What time is it, please? Jimmy, what time is it? 2.20. You got an appointment, honey? He has to be at the college at 2.30. Will you help me, please? Look, why don't you forget about him? He's dug in for a long, lost weekend. Will you help me? Look, honey, let nature take its course. Settle the second best. Are you going to give me a hand? Sure thing, honey. Let's dance. Come on. Don't waste the music. Come on. All right, Jimmy. There'll be none of that here. Come on. No singing. Please. The music. Stop it. Come on. Excuse me. Oh. Hmm? Come on, I'll let go. Go. let go. Let go. I missed them dancing. Come on, Jimmy. You're better. You all right? Hmm? Oh, now look what you've done, mister. Rena, did you call the auditorium to get word to Dean Baker? We'll be there in a few minutes. Patty? Patty? Come on, now, wake up. Oh, now, drink this. Oh, no, 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 drink the coffee. Come on, drink it. Patty, you're not taking this girl with you. Taking her? What is I going to do to take myself? Now, if she happens to be traveling the same road... Oh, Patty, this is me you're talking to, Joe Howe. If you want to take revenge on America for smothering you with the wrong kind of admiration, why not pick on a real target? And what makes you so sure I'm not passionately in love with the silly little cow? Sure. And in five or six weeks from now, when you've left her crushed and defenseless in some hotel room, there'll be one more thing to torment you. I feed on torment. Patty, don't feed on her. The old professor here has been having at me to let you out of me evil clutches. There are hundreds of people waiting. Shall we go? Mm-hmm. Come on. Oh, you know, you see there, Joe. She makes me as gentle as a lamb. Mm -hmm. Come on. Congratulations.
What kind of a man is he? Well, whatever else he is, he's a fine poet. A fine poet. What I want to know, Dean Baker, is... Will he be good to my daughter? I don't know where we failed, Rena. I wish I could have persuaded you to stay here and graduate. I know. You did what you could. Come and hear him. You have come to see the beef. I hope by the time you leave, I have shown you a little of the beauty. So. Oh, passionate futility, my life. Frightened beyond scars, I feed you to the world. And once murder sought a criminal's terms, but now I see the act needs not a knife. A blow, a bullet, a javelin of stone, an Atlantic churning bloated skin, the hairy rope snapping above the spine. A death is in the spirit of the bow. So wasting now in the hospitals of my mind, the haunted rooms which house beginning vain. Each corridor far and shallow and undefined with tears of alabaster bed designed to bear these million deaths that keep me nailed. My eternity waits with eyes upturned and wild. Excuse me, Dean Baker. I have to go away now. Will you please give the Serena for me? Go and see how wind bends branches and loosens apple stems. The fruit falls and forms a circle. Yes, drive a wagon to the vineyard, too. Lean forward, touch the grape with your warm hand. One that holds your face and feels no special movement now. Many flowers have grown toward your closed, windowless door. You have not seen how sky stretches after heavy autumn rain. I sense your breath in this sweet air, your hair, your lips. You touch my eyes with the midnight mist as my tears fall soundless on the soft moss that grows on the stone, now your spirit's dawn. Oh, the soft moss, the soft 
more. Always near you, my dear. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Your father asked me to say goodbye. And to give you this. Will you tell him, please? Tell him not to worry. Don't you want to say goodbye to Patty? I've said it. Joe didn't say goodbye. Doesn't matter. Oh, he's a good friend, Joe Howe. I'm with you now. Are you? Of course. A uh, young woman. No, just stand still a minute. Don't fidget about. Patty, what's the matter? I want to ask you a question. Can we get on board first? No. Would you mind if I asked you a very intimate question? No, <laughs> but there'll be plenty of time. What is your name? Don't you know? Well, I don't have a very good memory for the dry facts and figures of the marketplace. You know that. Patty, you do want me with you, don't you? I could be what you need. You know I could. Sure, I need you all right. <laughs> I need, heaven knows, I need somebody somewhere, but... What am I? What's you need? Well, what does that matter? <laughs> you don't really have any notion of what you're letting yourself in for, do you? You think I lead this kind of life because I like it. You think I'm proud when people queue up to gawk at me like a bug-eyed freak. They respect you. I saw it. They don't know. Now, that boyfriend of yours is right. All I'm doing is chewing over a lot of stale old bones that haven't had a bit of fresh meat on them in five years. But you'll get back to it. All you need is someone to look after you. I know you need me. All right. But you know what for? Do you know why I need people around me? So that I can destroy them instead of myself. I don't believe that. Mm -hmm. 